This is a once in a lifetime exhibit. You'll never see so many significant Volkswagens, historic Volkswagens, drag cars, you name it, everything is here at the, as much as we could get. Hey you guys, Eddie Collins here for Hoppy W's. Check this out you guys. You might have seen a video, a little preview of what was going on yesterday, but now you guys, it's in full swing. This is Friday at about uh, 3.53 in the afternoon right now. And let me tell you, here we are in another gorgeous California afternoon here in Pomona. I mean, this is pretty, check out this background here. You've got some pretty awesome cars. There's a photo shoot going on down there with some models. The vibe is definitely cool here. And the nice part is what's going on inside building number nine, you guys. So why don't we take you guys inside and you can check it out. Because like I said, yesterday you saw it, you kind of got a glimpse, but wait till you see this. And let me tell you, it's been a day that has been filled with lots of surprises. We've had friends show up from Texas, friends that have come all the way from DC. I mean, people that have come from Canada, everyone has come in to check all of these awesome Volkswagens. So why don't we go inside and you guys can check it out for yourselves. Let me get the door for you. Come on in. Get this one for you. All right, you guys, check this out. Ta-da! In full swing, you guys. This, this is so cool. Just a little bit ago, we actually had, and you'll see this in another video, we actually had not only Jim Holmes, but also Greg Aronson actually come by and be right in front of this classic, iconic car. So let's uh, let's go take a walk again, and uh, so maybe you guys can actually check out some of these cars that you didn't see in the other video that we did. But uh, like I said, the vibe is definitely hopping here. Everybody's really, really stoked and uh, enjoying all of these cars. Um, you know, sure it's, nice. that, like I said, the stories, the stories are amazing. Speaking of stories, we're going to be walking by Frenchie here, who's got oh, a story or two. So, hi, sir. Sorry to interrupt. We just wanted to make sure we got you on camera. Hey, nice to see you guys. <laughs> you did a great job putting this show together for us. And MP, we really appreciate what you did for the hobby, for all of us. This is a one-time deal, and we really appreciate it. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. Yep. I'd be at home working, building motors like I usually do, but you guys gave me a vacation for five days. So <laughs> thank you, Javier. I mean, appreciate all the, all the great work you guys are doing for all of us. Uh, thanks, Frenzy. Thank, thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry, where are you going to say from? Georgia. You're from Georgia. Georgia. From Georgia. Yeah, so well, I'm going to go down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And so you guys just flew in this morning or what? Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is great, you guys. So we were just talking on the video about the fact that, you know, we've had friends come in from Texas, you know, friends from uh, D.C. and now Arizona, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, well, yeah. he's, he's considered a neighbor. You're so close by. Yeah, yeah, 460 miles away. Uh, they, uh, he's <laughs> counting, huh? Yeah, no yeah, so you guys should have driven. Yeah. 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 Great idea. Uh, speaking of Volkswagen, so obviously you guys uh, have Volkswagen? Sure. What do you sure. have? Uh, I got, right now, we got... 367 and 62 and 63. Okay, so just a couple of them. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he ready to buy one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, he might have some to spare, huh? Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you got. Thank you, man. Uh, awesome. Overall, I think you guys did a great job. And a lot of people here talk, talk highly of how you guys did that's very cool. So we're very really proud to be part of this one-time deal. We wish it happened again, but from what we have said, it's not going to happen. But at least she was so nice to make certain cars for some of us to be here. But that's you guys are over the top. That's oh, that's awesome, man. Well, you know what? The magazine wouldn't be anything if we didn't have all you guys, you know, and everybody that's got an interest in the hobby. And I think this show definitely rejuvenates a lot of people's, you know, interest in it. Just to get into oh, the car yeah, now. Yeah. The newcomers in the hobby, and I tell people that all the time. You know, we're getting to the age where we need to bring a new, a new generation into the hobby. Yeah. Uh, and then to teach them you know, how to do them. And then it promotes them to excel and really build something they want to match what we have here. It could yep. be custom, full custom, or the original color. So yeah. there's always interest with the newcomer, but it's up to us 
old guys <laughs> to really promote the hobby and for them to get the magazine so they can see what the magazine has yeah. to offer. Oh, so yeah. they can see the style of cars that's being built and everything. So it means a lot. So Very cool. I try to do a lot of that in Arizona with some kids in my house. I try to teach them what would you like to know. A 15, 16 year old kid. But we have to promote that, like I said. To yeah. To the hobby. Absolutely. Yeah. So I show them, hey, what would you like to know? How to do it? We do a timing. We take the spark plugs out of the car. And I show them how to have an engine built. On my interest and in that car, on my interest and in it, was totally amazed. This brand new engine says, Yeah, this one's running. So I do all that, I fine tune the car to that timing. Uh -huh. But I think it's the greatest thing, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And you don't need a computer. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, you know? a lot of people don't care to text me. But beside that, they're good kids, so they want to learn. So we have to emphasize, hey, let's get in there and really promote the hobby and yeah. help them out. That's why we use a lot of that, too. That's cool. And that's what we're here for. Yeah. Support. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you for the comments, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, welcome. Thanks for the video. Enjoy the weather. Yes, thank you for the magazine. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See, this is yeah, awesome sorry. talking to you. No, no, no. How are you? I'm Eddie. Eddie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is really cool. Tell us about your car. Oh, this whole thing? Yeah, this whole uh, thing. So like, this is one, this is actually my first car. I learned how to drive in this car. You're and kidding me. Car. So, yeah. Wow. I got this when I was 15 and a half. So, wow. Just with the uh, family and friends and, and uh, built it as a, a teenager in high school and then just out of high school had a, a local shop in Arizona, Dino's uh, custom painting, painted it up for me. And then uh, got a little wreck right after that. Uh -huh. Went back there the following summer, uh, studying to be an architect in college. Cool. And uh, the owner offered me a job through the summer to work off the, the damage. No way. I never left. So wow. yeah, I was there for 14 years. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah, so it, it, it's been through a lifetime, but uh, I uh, sold it in the uh, early 2000s. I went to Indianapolis, Indiana for about 14 years. Wow. And then uh, popped back up on Samba for sale and I bought it back. No so, way. Yeah, wow. I actually got it for $500 cheaper than I sold it for. Oh my God. <laughs> the same tires on it. They really didn't do anything to it when I bought it back. So uh, in the meantime, uh, last few months, I put a new velour interior in it like it had originally. Uh -huh. Added the empty back seat and then uh, yeah. put Porsche V brakes and uh, my original VRMs that I had that were gonna go on it in the wow. 90s. I actually finally got to put them on the car. So that is cool. That yeah. is really cool. And you, you know it's interesting. I think you're about the third person that I've actually talked to during the show that has had the opportunity to buy their car back. Yeah, yeah. And it's Mind blowing. And at the time, I was like, "No, I don't need it." My friends like, "You gotta buy this car." And my, and my, right now I own it. I, it's shop called Deluxe Custom, so I restore, still restore classic Porsche VWs. Uh -huh. And um, my family all works for me too. My brothers work for me. Uh -huh. And they basically said, "Why aren't you buying the car?" I, said, I don't have room for it. But what? Why would I want my old car back? You know, I did it when I was eighteen. It's a kind of embarrassing. You know, when you think of no way. the quality we're doing today. But Come on. Once I got it back, it was like, duh. And my whole career. Everything that leads up today, for one reason I was starting with this car. I mean, there you go. Learned how to drive in it, learned how to work on it, learned how to wrench, learned everything about these cars because of this, this That's car. cool. So, and, and we made this t-shirt, which kind of explains where, where it all began, you know, like our, my career, my business, my shop. Yeah. So, and when you look at it, you know, it, you know, some people might walk by and go, why is this here? You know, it's just an old <laughs> crappy car. But, Dude, you know, it was on the cover of the magazine. Yeah, yeah. it was a cover yeah. car. Yeah, yeah. And you know? a lot of this stuff was done when I was 18 years old. Like, I built this car when you had to drive it every day. So you would take right. it apart at five o'clock at night, do some things, you had to put it back together to get home, right. to get back to work the next morning. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of the stuff, even even now, like when we took it apart to do the brakes and stuff, I had my guys come over and go, go look in there, go look and see what an 18 year old did, you know, building their car. So we got a lot of giggles out of it. And That's neat. We fixed a few things that, that may have been dangerous you know, uh -huh. back in the day, <laughs> um, but we still, uh, it's still nice to see it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I enjoy driving. And every time I get in, it just takes you right back to when you're going to high school. Early, That's cool. But, yeah, so that is cool. Not too many people have that opportunity. No, no. You know? And it, and it's cool now is like uh, a lot of people appreciate like the color and you know, uh -huh. that sort of thing. Like when I originally built it, it was kind of outside of the box. Right. And uh, for me, it was just natural to drive a car. But uh -huh. like, you know, you have people get it. They, they either like it or they hate it because yeah. of the color. And then. Uh, during the 90s, I went through that whole grunge era, and I, was, uh -huh. and I had long hair, uh -huh. and I had black, and Doc Martens, and all that. <laughs> and it was kind of embarrassing to drive a pink car, pink car. Uh -huh. when it was grunge. You know? uh -huh. so that's kind of the era that I sold it and it went away. Uh -huh. and, uh, so when I got it back, I was kind of wondering what you know, people think about it today. And, yeah. and believe it or not, like 
these bright colors and it stopped the middle of the street. It's like, oh, look at the color of your car. It's like, okay, now I remember why I did yeah. this. No, yeah. I, think, I think it's cool. You know, I think the neatest thing is, and it's funny because I tell my kids today, you know, I, I would say, don't worry about what other people think so much. You know, right. think if you like it, cool, you're happy with it. But it is kind of interesting just how it will still appeal, you know, to a lot of other people. And that's something know. that we talked to our, the rest of my friends who grew up with us and we built this car uh -huh. is that we had a lot of fun in the 80s. I mean, uh -huh. like people like the, even the graphics and, and when you see old music videos and uh -huh. stuff like that. Uh -huh. In the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And then life got real serious. Yep. And I think it's cool that maybe now people are starting to come back and have a little fun again. Yeah. And yeah. be able to you enjoy know, that sort of thing. People have the opportunity. There's people that, you know, have said, hey, when I was younger, I didn't have the chance. I didn't have the funds to go ahead <laughs> yeah. and maybe acquire something. Yeah, yep. I do. And yep. then they kind of go relive it. Right, but right. I think it's awesome that you actually get the opportunity to not only go ahead and do that, but to do it with the car that you built when you were in your teens. Oh, for sure. And you got to really, have the really space cool. for it. Like, the reason when I got it, I did. I sold this car to build a garage behind my house because my cars were dying in my backyard. In a wow. big backyard uh -huh. in Arizona, it was just the uh, sun was yeah, beating baking. them down, they were getting dirty. Uh -huh. And so I sold this car to build the garage, okay. and that was the only thing I had to fund it. Uh -huh. And so now this car lives in that garage wow. that I sold wow. it to build. So that's wow. fun. That yeah. is cool. Yeah, so in, you know, I have a, a lot of interests besides having. Uh, Restored Porsche, so I have a 356 as well uh -huh. you know, that I acquire, but also kind of goes in line with my business. Uh -huh. But uh, I have BW buses, I do a lot of the camp outs, you know, I do one every year and Lake Havasu, buses by the bridge. And uh -huh. So um, to, to have uh, uh, a space for it that I'm not sacrificing right. my, the, my fun cars that uh -huh. I do a lot of stuff today in, but now that I got it back on the road and have the the braking power and the, the, the you know I can have a little more fun with this car again. So that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, congratulations, man. Thank I mean, you. I, I think that's super, super cool, and it's another story that it's fun to share. You know, as as we talk to people, it's it's always neat what you hear and, and what you learn. And uh, I, I think it's great. So yeah, like my brother Brandon, I don't think that is going outside the box, but he works with me today. He's 38 years old. Wow. Even, I have pictures of him at five years old that the year this debut. Like, no way. Show just before, yeah, so a really <laughs> picture of him looking at the car yeah. as a five-year-old kid. Wow. And I'm there polishing me up. I got my long hair, you know, and, and it's just a really neat photograph. And now, you know, he's building Paco Restoration horses every day. And yeah. all, all because of him watching this. Yeah, because of watching his older brother. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a 57 over window bug that's in mid-process right now that he debuted soon. And, and, cool. uh, it's, a, it's a really neat car, so at least thinking outside the box, got a lot of Porsche 356 um, things done to it, uh -huh. stuff that nobody's done yet, um, because it's doing it all day long with the Porsche restorations, and so it's like a, a mesh, the car that he's going to get a build right now, so. How cool. And then my other brother, Stouffer, that's back there with the hat on, he actually had a cover, uh, a Hobby W's cover car as well. Really? Oh, wow. Which one, Purple 63, uh, racked up in 2000. Two, I believe, or wow. nine. Like, that car lives in Reno, Nevada. Okay. And people that that bought that from them still show it every day. Oh my gosh. It's, it's still out at, at hot rod shows. It's still alive and, and out wow. in public today. That's so. really cool. Yeah. I mean, the fact, the fact that you guys have two covered cars in the family. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, the, I love the fact that it's um, the brother. Yeah, that he, is really cool. He grew up, I've been working side by side with him for almost 35 years. So he worked as you know, alongside with him. So, wow. Yeah, so he. he Spread out a little bit. He has a '56 uh, Bel Air and a '50 Chevy pickup now. So he, he went. So a this is direction. his kind of show, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's been here many times. So. Uh -huh. But he kind of went that direction. But he still got Volkswagen and Porsche in his heart. But that's cool. Yeah, got some Chevy in there too. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I know someone that uh, you know involved with the magazine that also has a Chevy as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> the car people the deep down, you know, car uh, they're yeah, up '72. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 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 Shin's got his huge boat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we gotta just you know, have fun in life, right? Yeah, exactly. So I had a, a small exactly. moment where we, at my old boss's shop at Dino's, we got into the motorcycle world, we got into the sports oh truck world. I mean, I built a Chevy oh. Dooley that was on the cover of the truck, and uh -huh. the only thing I didn't do in the motorcycle world, I didn't get been a film chopper. So I had a fight for a minute. And uh -huh. like, uh, so the biggest thing is I, on a motorcycle, it's usually just you or one other person with you. And uh -huh. I like to travel with a lot of friends, so I always like to have a lot of seats. So. Built a dually, Chevy dually instead. Nice. That was a little bit of fun for a while, but <laughs> always come back to what we love. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Oh, well, very cool. Well, thank hey, you for your time, man. Appreciate it. Before you guys leave, if you don't mind, I would like to share something with you with the kind of work that Matt does at his shop. Yeah. And oh, right on. Ten feet. So these are some of the cars that he's done over the years. When I go into their shop once in a while to uh -huh. show 
So this is the kind of work he does, right? Everything's on the bench, it's everything. Some of the cars he's done oh, before. Nice. I mean, this, you see it now, but when it's done, it's just over the top. Wow. Uh, yeah, we bring that kind of stuff back wow, to life. Can you see this? 54. Wow, 54. look at that. Continental, they call it. Wow. 55 Continental. Oh my god, dude, that's great. Oh, that's yeah, that's nice. I love that color. Again, oh, this my. is their shop, that's what he does. Yeah, so we, Very we cool. ventured off a little bit further in that. Yeah, so, no, this big is, time. So when you look at this, this is, uh, like, again, like an 18 year old with this car. <laughs> this is great. No, I love <laughs> the history yeah. behind it. Uh, so on our t-shirt, that's oh, why yeah, wow. yeah, we did a, I think it was a 57 Roadster for And so. the Jack. Jeez. Very cool. Very, 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 very cool. That's the kind of work that Matt does at the shop. I mean, That's over the awesome. Top, we'll have to come to your shop sometime and check it out. We have an open house April 2nd. Actually, it's the day before Bugarama. Oh, really? I guess they're, right. they're announcing that Bugarama's on April 2nd. Yeah, they're already announced. Yeah, so they're the gonna, day before, we have an open house. So we have a swap, a closer swap meet yeah. in, the, in the parking lot. And you're yeah. the shop to everybody to come look. And in our cul-de-sac for our businesses, we fill it with everything you can imagine. Motorcycles, hot rods, American cars, and uh, day before Bugarama. So it'd be a great, awesome. great opportunity to come out and see the shop. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you for the invitation. Yeah. And thank you again for right, your time. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will catch thank you guys later. You. Thank, you. Right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a thank good show. Oh. All right, you guys, check these out. I mean, <laughs> you when you see these cars in the magazine, it's one thing. When you see them up front in real life, it, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of surreal just seeing these and just, I mean, they're just timeless. I love, love, love the fact that both of these cars are right here and so many people will come by to check them out. It's, it's very cool. But let's go this way. I think I saw, I think I saw Stefan somewhere around here. I wanted to talk to him about his car. There he is. Let's see if we can catch him. So many folks here. It's hard to catch up with everyone. So, oh, he's wearing the good t-shirt too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stefan. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? What? We're recording. Hey. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so my goodness is right. Can we talk about your car? Uh, Sarge, do we have five minutes to talk about my car? All right, I gotta do that. All right, okay. You guys, so for those of you that don't know, I mean, this is Stefan. Stefan's pretty well known, and uh, we're fortunate that he's obviously part of our staff here. So nice t-shirt, man. Where'd you get that? Oh, I, like I don't know. Oh, nice t-shirt too. Got some memo, huh? <laughs> yes, we know some people. Yeah, a couple people. So you guys, uh, we had shown you this part of the video yesterday, but now here we are with the owner himself. So, hey man, tell us about your car. When you got it, what inspired you to get it? Where did you start this whole motorcycle ride? Uh, long story short, the car was built the way it is pretty much back in 1983, 84 by a gentleman called Jim Lau, who was part of DKP back in the early 90s. <clears throat> I moved to the US back in 1992, and my dream was being part of DKP, and this car came up for sale. And uh, my buddy Bill Schremer, who is here too with this car from Tennessee now, uh, called me and said, hey, there's a DKP car for sale. Are you interested? And he told me which car it was. I said, yeah, sure. I always dreamed of having a Raktop, an oval Raktop. That's what I wanted. Yeah. And when he called me, I said, sure, I'll go for it. And um, that's that. Since then, the car has been... So I bought the car in 1993. The car was repainted in 1995 by Danny Gabbard. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's... Uh, yeah, Gaffa did the paint job back uh -huh. in 95. And the engine has been evolving through the years. Um, it started in 2110, and now it's a 2276. <laughs> Makes about 190 horsepower or something. About how many? 190. All right. Yeah, so and it runs 1368 with a quarter mile, and uh, yeah. Oh, that is so and cool. And what's special about the car, um, there's some cool parts, you know, like the brakes, the 356 brakes, Porsche 356 brakes, which are fully polished. Um, there are some moon ice parts in the back. Um, Pretty traditional cow look, pretty much in the spirit of uh, DKP, you know. So let me ask you something. So you said you moved to the U.S. in '92. Right. Okay. Where'd you move from? I moved from France. So in France. Okay. So when you were in France, 
Were you thinking Volkswagens then? Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. I used to be involved with another magazine from France. Okay. Which magazine? Uh, called Super VW. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. Um, I did that from 87 until 91. Okay. And then I told my boss, okay, I'm moving to the US, and that's what I did. <laughs> freelancing has become my, my full-time job back in Peace Wow, you've been freelancing for that long? That is awesome. That is awesome. And so now I understand that obviously you both right, but you're also, you love hot rods too. I love hot rods too. Yeah. I did the hot rod thing and I came back to uh, the VW. Yeah. <laughs> I never sold the VW. I've owned it for almost 30 years now. That's so cool. And I did the hot rod thing and ultimately I had the choice between keeping the 32 or the bird because of space limitation right. where I live. Mm -hmm. I had to keep it back. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, it's it's fun. It's fun to see it out here, and obviously, it's great to see you as always. Yeah, it's an honor. It's, you know? uh, it's funny. I always get them all to have the car here, and my buddy Bill says, "You gotta go. <laughs> you have to be part of this." Uh, there was a lot of work to, to, to bring the car to this level. Uh -huh. It needs some work to be done, and uh, but I spent the whole week pretty much uh, working uh, on the car. You know, well, it looks ready. awesome. It Thank looks you. awesome. It's, a, it's an old paint job. It's twenty-five year old, twenty-five year old paint job. Uh, you, you never know it. You would never know it. I guess that's what a good paint job does, huh? Yeah. Lasts that long. It looks great still. So, well, cool, man. I'm glad we caught you. Now, I know you're busy. You're gonna go do yeah, some house. So, we have a party. We have a good dinner with. Uh, Jim Wait, Holmes and, what? Uh, what? Jim, Jim who? What? Huh? Jim Holmes. And, oh yeah, that guy. Huh? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> right on. Hey, you guys. Step and tough guy. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Guys. Thank you. Uh, see you, man. Have a good dinner. So what a trip, huh? God, look at that. <laughs> he hasn't really changed too much, huh? <laughs> super, super cool. In fact, we had a quick little video um, of his car pulling away one day in uh, in the cul-de-sac, and that was kind of fun. Just listening to the thing and just listening to the straight cuts. That's just uh, such a great, great sounding car, and uh, definitely fun to look at. You know, it's interesting as we're as we're interviewing people and talking to people, it's kind of uh, funny that you hear the same story all the time. They're, they either have this other car because they needed the money because they just got married or something. And some of these people that have gotten them back, they're super lucky. But then the other the other thing is always space, 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 space. So you know, I'm telling you, that's the one that always seems to be uh, a big factor. Well, speaking of space, this uh, warehouse here is definitely plenty of space to house all of these cars. <laughs> that's for sure. Well, one of the hey, things that I just you? noticed on here, which is kind of cool, check this out. This, I mean, this just screams back in the day. I love the whole French antenna, you know, look. And of course, louvers. It's so funny, back in the day, when I was younger, I did not have the money to go have my stuff louvered. Super, super bummed. But uh, oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, this is so wild. <laughs> so cool, look at this. Hey, posters for sale, there you go. It's a trip to see these cars come back and uh, like, I, like I keep saying, seeing them, seeing them in, uh, in real life is something else. Look at this, I mean, look at the back window. <laughs> it's, it's really cool just to see people's ideas and uh you know just their dreams kind of come to fruition and it, it's it's pretty awesome especially like when we were just talking to matt howard you know the fact that he did that car when he was so young and to see what he's doing now uh, i tell you if you want to be inspired about hey how do i do my own thing how do i make a living with my uh you know with, with whatever passion you might have this is definitely a great way to see how people that have that passion can turn it into uh, a living, you know. And they have, you know, I've always been told, well, hey man, you know, if you do what, if you're doing what you love, then it's not really work, right? So um, now I think I mentioned these. So these are the ones that were at SEMA. These were uh, obviously Pitch and Rides, uh, Kin Dig It. Look at what uh, what they've done here. This is a Hemp Mueller. Again, another video that we've done in the past that you might want to take a look at was what this car looked like before um, it actually had this uh, make over here. Uh, we took a ride with uh, the previous owner, Carl Schuler, down uh, down through the streets of Orange, 
in uh, in this head, and it was really cool to go ahead and you know be in the uh, passenger seat and uh, and record it all, which is pretty neat. And now to see what's been done to it, it's just unbelievable. All of the uh, customization that's taken place. You know, whenever I see cars like this, I always think to myself, this is one way to get to work on time. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, the, the power plant that you can actually fit in these. And I love the, I love the coating actually on the, on the header. Just the color of it. Of course, the original German folks, German folks. Um, this is a, uh, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous car. I mean, all of the cars here are gorgeous, you guys, and they all have their own you know, flavor and flair to them, but, you know, it's just a sensory overload for me when I'm looking at these. I love this color. Look at this. I think we mentioned yesterday just the amount of time that people have actually placed on, you know, the details and getting them ready. And boy, it sure does pay off. Absolutely beautiful. Check out the interior. I can go through the center if you show that interior. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that, you guys. That is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the detail. Look at the way the headliner where it's uh, terminated there on the pillar. That looks really, really cool. Right there, too. Oh. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Look at that green. And of course, uh, my friend Tony's. Uh, Peb over here, I think you guys might have remembered uh, from a uh, cover not that long ago. Look at this engine. <laughs> this thing's such a trip. I love the detail. And, you know, for, for those of you looking, one of the neatest things about, you know, something like this is when uh, when you start looking at how clean it is, kind of like, where, where are the wires, you know? Um, just some of, the, some of the details that the builders you know give these cars it's it's so cool to actually see the final product i mean you, it, it's hard to believe that these cars you know a lot of these cars were actually driven into the show i mean yeah there's there's some trailer queens and so forth but like for example i think we showed you a low light gear um in a, in a previous video that we did it was low light gear with huge power plant in it well, guess what? That thing drove like 17 miles here and just flying down the freeway. And then when you see it here, you're going, what? You can eat off that thing. So a lot of these cars that you see, it's kind of neat to actually understand that, uh, guess what? They're not just trailer queens. People are actually hauling down, uh, down the highway or through the streets to get here. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Look at this, you guys. Eye candy galore. Out for these chairs, don't trip on that. Look at that interior. That's gorgeous. Very cool. Now, for people that may not, uh, you know, recognize early, early cars, um, you know, obviously a lot of you guys out there, you'll know, but a lot of times people think, oh wow, this thing has one piece window kit, you know, but no, it's not the case. Look at this, you know, this is not custom. <laughs> that stock there to actually go ahead and let a little bit of air in while you're driving with the uh, with the windows for the most part rolled out through the weather. Just beautiful, I love that color too. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. It doesn't say, but it's gorgeous, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Now here's a kind of an interesting story, you guys. So this car actually was uh, literally purchased this week or like the day before the show and brought to the show by the gentleman that purchased it, which is pretty, pretty incredible when you think about it. But, oh, you know what, you guys, speaking of cars, check this out. Here's this. All right, guys, I gotta show you. My buddy Tony over here. Tony, is it okay to show him your Fritalin? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So you guys, this is this this is a really really cool Fritalin, and the amount of space that is actually in this car is incredible. It's more than a 
than a bay window bus and a regular bus. Uh, I mean, it's you have a ton of room in here, but check out the detail on this thing. And you know, just like most of Tony's cars, they all have quite the power plant. And what's cool about these cars, if, if uh, for those people that have never seen a Frio Wind, there's a lot of adaptations from you know type threes, type twos, but it's its own, you know, it's its own car. But this thing, this thing is amazing. I love the slider doors, obviously. You know, just I love the color, the detail to it, the wheels, everything about it. Look at this thing. Look at the headlights. <laughs> oh, it's just awesome. The, the crazy part, you guys, is the size of the windshield. Just giant. I mean, visibility till the cows come. Cool. Now, some of you might have noticed the, uh, the barn door, actually. I remember uh, Shin when we went to do the photo shoot at, at the oh, studio. Fun. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, yeah, we did the photo yeah, shoot at the studio. It's really cool. Yeah. Now, check this out, you guys. Me being a bus guy, it's always fun to check this out. Because when you look at this, you know, first of all, look at this, you guys. It's, it's amazing that it's a double door. And then when you look at the seat, it's, you know, double flipper. So both uh, both of the ends come down, and the color that this green is really, 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 really cool. So the color combination is awesome, and just the again, all about the details is absolutely beautiful. After we came up the dead foot on this, and the other thing too, which was kind of neat, is when you talk about certain uh, certain options, certain codes, and so forth. You know, the back patch is also hinged now usually on on you know the regular barn doors that, or you most common barn doors you'll notice that it's basically just the deck lid that opens up and um, but there was actually an m code uh, option for the back to open up but this one uh, this one's custom yeah. so this car is always a trip just because of the fact that you know when you're when you're actually you know, next to it. I mean, check this out, you guys. I'm not that sure, but believe this. It's huge, right? <laughs> now, what's, what's a trip is the fact that everything on here that is, you know, that, that you see, it's all been custom made. And I mean, it's just, it's it's incredible. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's a trip. And the funny part is that, you know, First, I thought maybe my high roof wasn't going to be taller. Yeah, that makes people smaller. And <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. That is too funny. Uh -huh. it's, but it, it's it's wild, you know, just looking at all the details from the uh, you know overrider support tubes to just you know tail lights, everything. I mean, it's it's a trip. It's a trip to see it because it's almost like okay, this is one of those like you know haunted shack kind of <laughs> things where you're like, what's going on here? But yeah, no, this this is neat. I'm telling you guys, if if uh, you know if you get a chance to come down and see stuff like this, you got to take advantage while you can. 